Back in bold, part four. We're rolling on this series, creating a metaverse business. We're building the first metaverse hotel with our man, Tommy Farr. We got a special guest today. We have Tommy's artist, a dude What's in going on? He's been making waves in the NFT industry. Uh, this is exciting. I'm really curious how you can make this, this NFT artwork because, I mean, it doesn't seem like it costs that much money to make but then it's going for so much money. So I, I really want to learn about uh, this side of the business. Tommy, can you introduce your, your man? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is our first introduction of our creative director. Um, he's actually going to be heading up all artwork um, and creative direction of Metaverse Hospitality. Um, so yeah, welcome Nai to our, to our team. He's uh, coming you, all the way from here. Lagos, Africa. Um, so yeah, welcome Nai. If you could give a little background on, um, you know, just your background in art, you know, how uh, you've come up on an artist in, in Africa and then uh, I'll, I'll touch on how we got in touch, I guess. Hey, my, one okay. quick one, one quick thing, one quick thing. He's playing the Banksy thing. You know, he's mysterious. He's getting in the dark <laughs> room. I like it. I, I fucking... yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my name is Ni. Nee. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. I schooled in Nigeria all my life. I studied mass communication. And somewhere along my third year in uni, well, not third year, my second year, I started, I started designing. I first started using Macromedia Fireworks before Adobe bought it. Then I moved on to Photoshop. I left uni in 2012. Started working for a multimedia company called Indani TV, which is owned by GT Bank, one of the biggest um, banks in Nigeria. I worked there till from 2013 to 2018, and I've been freelance ever since then. In between 2013 to 2018, I've worked with a lot of local brands and international brands. I've worked with Facebook as a freelancer. I worked with Google. I worked with LVMH. I worked with Uber. Almost. The latest, me. you you had some cover art for uh, an artist that uh, had went uh, went viral, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I recently did the cover of um, Peru, which is a song by Ed Sheeran and Fireboy. Yep, yep, sure Fire yeah, yeah, Fireboy. Yeah, so it's, it's been making waves. I've done for some international artists too. I did, um, I think, for Conor Maynard and SDJM. They released like a um, an EDM version of I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. I've worked on that. I've worked a lot of Nigerian artists from Ladipo to just look out at, um, at some point I also did photography with Guardian Life on Guardian. I've shot for magazines. I've basically been in the creative space since 2013, just making stuff, collaborating, doing exhibitions. My skill sets ranges from art direction, photography, 3D branding, AR, VR, motion graphics, Almost anything you can think of creatively. I think the only aspect I've not dabbled in is web, because that's not really my my strongest suit. In my spare time, I have a personal ongoing project called Mr. Color, where I just put out experimental visuals that I want to do outside of client work. And it's hello Mr. Color on Instagram. You can check it out. But yeah, that's pretty much like a rough lowdown about everything I've done up to this point. And I met Tommy through a friend called Jadi Soland. He kind of reached out and told me about the idea for what he wanted to do. And I thought it was very innovative and fresh because I've been in the NFT space. I have a profile on Foundation, Super Rare, Rarible, Known Origins. But I kind of took a break just to kind of re-strategize my process with NFTs. But yeah, like I said, Tommy reached out to me with this project where I th which I thought was very it was a it was a rough like, start at first to be honest like, yeah it was a rough start because i thought he was a scammer which was ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a little sketchy you know, message fun, on my yeah. end i guess yeah and the way yeah, as, as, the, me, as the roles reverse because usually you know americans we talk about getting scammed by the nigerian princess exactly because in the crypto space now it just feels like there's a lot of white scammer so i was like oh this is another white scammer it wasn't until his friend reached out to me like oh yo this guy is legit like you need to talk to him and I was like, okay, let me go back and 
because the message felt very generic like oh i have this nft project i'm working on i want you to be I'm like yeah this is another and it didn't help that it was my message request because we were not following each other back then so yeah yeah well, now it, it, was, was, it was so yeah jadisola yeah. actually we, we've been friends for years and years now going yeah. back to when i lived in saint petersburg um and randomly one day we were just talking about art um it was very it was i think even before i got my board ape um just i just asked her about artists she was into um you know anybody that may be in the nft space and she's like i, I don't know if Nai has nfts yet and at that point he had released one or two um but i looked into his art looked into uh, his vision and from there i've been a follower been a fan since and slowly as my vision of my own company as my own business has evolved and i i've kind of seen how nai could fit in and that it's going to be you know a really good fit kind of what made made it it work best is when we first talked when we first got that introduction after jadasola finally you know said you can trust him you know it's it's something that that could be really really cool um, what really attracted to me to Nye is that he, he it was one of the first things he said is I'm not just an artist, you know, I don't want to just do your artwork and leave it at that. You know, we're, we're building a company, we're building an entire creative direction that falls in line with the company, not just like one piece of art. Um, so that's, I think, where uh, we both had a, a same vision and we aligned on that and, you know, full steam ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm interested, like, why him like what uh, makes your creative thing unique and your art and and whatnot like our you know what's the specialty you know i'm not a, a, a genius or a historian of art but what makes you unique um i think because i'm multidisciplinary i can walk across almost any medium so i know how to effortlessly weave 3d into brand like i know how to walk across different um skill sets and I've been doing this for close to 10 years. So I have a lot of experience, both locally and internationally. And I, I feel like, well, no, I feel like I know I'm very innovative and I always bring something fresh to the table because I'm always very, I'm always thinking of the next big idea to work on. Just, I have this hunger for more, which I think has to do because I have ADHD. So I'm always not, I'm never satisfied. My brain is just always, so I think that's what makes me a very special fit with. And I think Tommy was interested in someone like that who can. Yeah, exactly. You know, bring Especially when, when it comes space. to like Sandbox, for example, just we just had this conversation a couple of days ago about how we're building up our hotel in Sandbox and that he, um, you know, I told him the prices of all the builders and how long it would take and all this. And he's like, you know, let me look at it. Let me see if I can build this. Um, let's make, make it, you know, a team thing and, and see if we can make this a little more personalized to, to our company. So, now we're looking and building our, our sandbox, our hotels ourselves and seeing if we can make that happen, you know, just on uh, our creative side. Um, so yeah, so, it's so kind of- What is like your style though? Like I know like expressionism or classical stuff or, you know, I love um, a Roman architecture. Like what is your kind of like feel? You know what I'm talking about? I think because I'm an art director, I don't have one particular style. I know how to work based on the brief. So if the brief says, oh, we want something inspired by maybe German design or Japanese design, I know how to adapt to, because that's how an art director should work. You should be able to take an idea and take it to the next level. And kind of, I know how to th tinker with things. Like I know how to deconstruct things and approach them from a fresh idea. So I wouldn't say I have a, 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 a particular style. It just depends on what the project demands. If you're asking for my personal artistic style, I think my work is more in the colorful slash psychedelia area. I do a lot of work that is inspired by psychedelics and colors, but I try to differentiate those aspects. Because so when I'm working as an artist, it's based on what I want to do. And when I'm working as an art director, it's based on what the brief tells me. So if Tommy is saying, oh, I want something that looks like um, it came out of Blade Runner. I would obviously go and research on Blade Runner and see how I can adapt it. So I don't think I have a personal style when it comes to my design approach. It's just mostly for my artistic approach where I have a style. Yeah, Before because you've been in... My bad. Before we get into um, the kind of the style Tommy's looking for, for, for the, the hotels, I'm curious, how did you like blow up? 
I mean, from Africa, the, the big city and whatnot, but it seems like you've got a global presence. You've worked with all these big brands. I mean, how are you yeah. able to go from a, you know, a kid in Africa to the international stage? So when I said I'd worked with these brands, it's not really the international branch. It's usually like the, um, the African, um, what's the word? Should I say branch? I mean, I've worked with Comedy International, but you know, I mean, Google has Google in Africa and Google. So it's not like I worked with Google USA, but I worked with Google, which is a part of the main Google. But um, you'd be surprised. Lagos is a very innovative space and there's a lot of big players in the scene. And I think over the years, as the internet and um, as the internet has become a global village, it's been very easy for artists from this region to kind of break it into those things. So I don't think it's, it's been really hard. It was hard at the beginning, but now that we're having conversations about the internet and metaverse, everything feels very inclusive. Like I could do some work now and somebody in maybe Germany might see it and also connect with it. So it's, I think the internet has made that possible. There's a lot of amazing creatives in Nigeria slash Lagos that are doing very big things. So I don't think it's, it's been that hard. It's just a matter of how I can use the internet to my advantage and connect to. Now, now at the same time, now I remember how we, uh, you were saying how you've still never been to the United States though, and we're we're making exactly. it big in Miami next. So uh, yeah, uh, he he's being a little humble. I think that he is. He's doing really really well in Africa. You know, he he's got his name out there, but at the same time, he does want to have that global presence. That uh, yeah, that, that's uh, to come. Cool. Hey, let's get into this. So, Tommy, what are you looking for for an, an art director and how is he going to operate and what's the theme? Is it going to be like the Trump Hotel? Everything's gold. Like what is what is it going to look like? Uh, so there's there's two sides of it to two different hotels. Pretty much we have the the hotel that's going to be a little more luxury, be a little more five star uh, resort uh, than uh I don't know, I don't want to say degenerate, but you know how the NFT space has like that degenerate, like, shoot, my shirt says it right now, Board Ape Yacht Club degenerates only. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, gambling, sports bets, horse racing, um, our hotel, our other hotel, not next to Board Ape Yacht Club is next to Zed Run, which is the horse racing. Um, so that one's going to include, you know, the casino and the gambling side versus our um, flagship hotel next to Board Ape Yacht Club will be a little more luxe, a little more luxurious, um, a little more fancy, uh, and like more so, you know, wine dinners versus uh, DJ and parties. You know, that type of scene is the difference in the hotels. Um, when it comes to art direction, it will reflect that a little bit as well. We're going to make, so we have um, our initial drop is what we're focused on right now. It's actually going to be a free NFT and it's going to be the uniform for all our staff members and supporters in the, uh, the metaverse. Um, so you'll get an NFT of this uniform. I'm going to leave it at that because um, we haven't released anything yet, but it'll be something that you can put on your avatar in the metaverse. So you're going to own this NFT, we'll, which will eventually get you a wearable in the metaverse. So you can see, you know, Oh, that's, Metaverse hospitality staff, let's go to them for help. Uh, so it'll be very, very recognizable right away. Um, and then from there, uh, we're not finalized yet, but how the uh, NFTs for the two hotels are going to work is it's going to be an access key. Um, so think of a hotel key, but for the future. So we're thinking again, wearables, maybe a ring, maybe a watch. Maybe we make it uh, you know, a little bit artistically directed towards the hotels. Um, but that's the start of our artistic direction and, and where we're going to um, you know, launch this company with those two NFT drops. I apologize. I'm, I'm just terrible with the name and that's a hard name, but uh, Neo, I'm going to say just Neo for now. Are you building all this? You're building the buildings, the NFTs, like, are you creating all this? Uh, the building is not sure yet. The NFT is yes. If I'm yeah, not, yeah. yes, I'm, yes, I'm working on the NFT, yes. Because I so have experience it, in 3D. Um, our focus now is on the artwork and, and yeah. the NFT drop is the main goal uh, before everything else is complete. So we want to get the NFTs out there. Um, so yeah, that's that's nice focus right now is the actual artwork. Um, but from there is where we're bringing in, you know, 
so much more. Nye, how do you how long does it take to create the NFT? Like what kind of work goes into this? I mean, how do you do it? Um, well, the first time you already research, you will tell me, oh, we want to maybe we want to make rings for for to give people as NFTs going to research of what the rings look like, what they should look like, the colors and everything. Then the next step is just implementing it, probably using a software like Cinema 4D to build the base model. I'm pretty much, it's, it's, basically, it's basically from research to implementation. That's pretty much it. Like I said, it's all based on the brief of what he asked me for and how I can interpret it to what I think would work for people to buy as NFTs. They could also be use cases where we could have them in like AR from where you could have like a filter or something where you scan it and you could actually see the ring in real life in form of AR. So there's going to be different possibilities. So like, how do I make an NFT? Let's say I want to make, how are you making the the shirt for the people, you know? Like Tommy, you were just talking about you're going to drop the free NFT. How do you make that? I, I, I have no idea. So it depends. I mean, you can go as simple as literally uploading an uh, image, image. Yeah. to uh to a marketplace that's the simplest way if you want to look at it like that you can literally have your created png file uh, jpeg file whatever it is and upload it to say OpenSea as an nft simple as that there's obviously more complex ways whether it's you know if you're going to mint it from someone's website and you have to have a solidity contract in place the website needs to be on chain um, and then you need to mint everything to the contract. And then the contract has to be connected to the wallets, which is connected to OpenSea. That's the more complex version of it. But if you know, if you want to get simple as possible, you literally upload an image and then it's an NFT. That's it. We could also make like a 3D version of that same image where it's like it's rotating. So you're seeing it more interactively. There's different ways. But like you said, yeah, OpenSea or any of these. Just yeah, that, that is what actually got me attracted to Nai in the first place was his uh, 3D imaging. We'll, we'll definitely share some some of his work through our social media, but some of his 3D, I mean, all of his work is pretty amazing, but the 3D is really, really what caught my eye at first. Yeah. Nee, what, what excites you the most to be part of this this metaverse and building this uh, this hotel, these hotels? Like, what is neat about it? Why do you want to do this? I think for me, it's two things. I've not seen anybody approach the metaverse from a hotel perspective because i've never really had anybody say oh you can get an nft from this project and in real life you get real life use cases and i think again the second thing is his vision and his transparency i think i like how transparent he is with like we've had discussions and he's let me know that okay this is what this is this is what this is like this is what i'm going to do and those are the two things i value the most about this project the transparency and just where he's taking it because i Everybody's kind of using NFTs with games, music, videos. I've not seen anybody with the use case of hospitality and hotels. And I think hospitality is a very important aspect of, of luxury because people want to feel good. People want to feel comfortable. And if you now add NFTs to that, I feel like that's a, that's a game changer. And like I said, I've, I've not really seen anybody do it. People are focusing on the, the normal ideas you would have. Again, pictures, films, games but i don't think i've seen anybody approach it from the hospitality angle so that's what's really exciting me that uniqueness is what you've been doing the past 10 years with art like you've always been looking yes. for the cutting edge thing not copycat exactly. the next yes exactly how to stand out because there's a lot of creatives on, on the internet but you need to set yourself apart so how am i different from this person how am i different from this person and that has been the core value of my own work anyways that i'm just having fun can you give me some examples of how you've done that in your past? Um, so I have a company with my with my friend called Thrill Digital, and we've basically created a shoot a shoot to earn game called Astra. I can share the link. But we've created so many projects. We also started one where we we're doing digital fashion when digital fashion just became a thing. I've worked with so many brands where I've tried to apply new mediums of technology like AR. There's a fashion brand I work with where we're currently using AR to visualize the glasses before you buy them. So you can try them on and see how they look before even buying it. And nobody's really doing that in streetwear in, 
in my region anyways in nigeria hey, you need so you I'm, need to, you need to get tommy to do that so he can get some better glasses i don't think he uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh well, i gotta bring up once an episode at least huh <laughs> No, it's starting yeah. to become your style. The cocaine cowboy, I love uh, it. I, I figured I got to Actually, it now. reminds me of um, Fear and Looting in Las Vegas. Have you seen the movie? What is it? Your glass, it reminds me of Fear and Looting in Glass Las Vegas. The one with Johnny Depp. No, oh, I Hunter haven't. Thompson. About Hunter Thompson, yeah. He, I think, uh, yeah. The glasses, yeah. they remind me of, yeah. Um, I wouldn't see y'all without it. I got I got to rock it. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a good marketing play too. Like, oh, that's Tommy. That's the hotel guy, the Metaverse hotel. Yeah. It stands out. If he just didn't, if he just wore that shirt, it'd be like, oh, okay, bored guy, bored ape yacht. But the glasses, yeah. like, oh, who is this guy? Who is this character? Exactly. I that's dumb. why I thought first when we, when we had a video call, I was like, okay, this is interesting. I'm... <laughs> because the last person I saw wearing this type of glasses was my dad, and this is. A long time ago, so yeah, yeah, bringing them back, bringing them back. <laughs> Maybe thing this for me, though. <laughs> for Tommy, um, okay, so when you were in St. Regis, let you did you meet the art director or did you see what they did? And how is that different from your hotel in the metaverse? Or is it going to be the same like responsibilities and ideas? How did St. Regis do it, and how do you want to do it? Um, it, it, it is a little bit different, I think, when it comes to five star hotels in real life, the main factor is cleanliness. Obviously, it's a, the building is beautiful on its own and everything inside is immaculate, but if it wasn't clean, then it wouldn't look like that. So when it comes to five star buildings and service, it's, it's literally cleanliness and keeping it up and literally everybody having an eye on it as a food and beverage manager. You know, if I saw trash on the ground or anything that is off, you know, I, I would notice a marking on the wall in the St. Regis because I walk past it every day and look for stuff like that. And that's the same with everybody's mindset at the St. Regis. And that's why it stays immaculate. So it'll be a little bit different when it becomes to a metaverse, but it, it does come down to the look and the feel of things. Um, but at the same time, it's how you're made felt. We're going to make service five stars in the metaverse as well. You know, we want to, if you're a regular visit, we want to know your name right off the bat. You know, we want to have someone greeting you right there as soon as you walk in the hotel. Uh, if you need help, you, you'll have help and uh, all the way through, you know, and that's also what makes something luxurious is when you can be ahead of the guest, when you can literally look at a situation and see what the guest needs before they ask it of you. And I think that's a side of luxury that we're going to be able to hit in the metaverse. But yeah, art direction is a thing as well where it's just got it's got to look good and i think as long as you're on the same page of having you know maybe we're not we're not sure on the exact um aesthetics but for example maybe we'll do all white like the addition hotels they have that look of you know all white in the lobby with a nice green palm tree it's you know it's a beautiful luxurious clean look um but that the actual look of things is not something we've completely finalized yet regarding uh like building the hotels and bringing building out the ex exact spaces me what do you think what do you think what do you want to look like and what is your idea so far i mean my the type of architecture i love is a lot of um nordic design that scandinavian design and again like you said just very clean clean lines and scandinavian minimalism Scandinavian yes, people, yeah, yeah. because I feel like it, it helps, it puts you in a very peaceful state of mind, you know, but if we can mix that, because I, I searched, I researched on, on St. Regis, if we can mix that with like luxury, I feel like there's a fine point in the middle where those two blend and you can get something really, really dope. But like I said, we would think about it and definitely work on creating something. Yeah, the hotel is something we're going to it'll be back and forth for a little bit you know why the yeah. why the nft uh artwork is the main focus right now yeah yeah um i have a comment on that so scandinavian minimalism i lived in denmark for a year so i oh. i traveled through sweden i know um been in norway all that stuff and uh i like it and it is clean it gets your mind crisp but sometimes it feels soulless you know and i'm thinking with the metaverse how do you make that feel alive and not just a video game when I stare at a screen for too long, I feel like shit. You know what I mean? So how do you make these hotels feel like they have life, like uh, an Italian villa or they have, you know, the, these good feelings and not like 
totally dead inside like it feels sometimes in scandinavia so that's why it's going to, that's why like i said we're going to mix it with something else the cleanliness of, of scandinavian design would definitely be there but we can now introduce like maybe tropical elements or something that gives you that holiday but i think a very good example would be like tulum in mexico i don't know if you've been to tulum yeah it's, it's, like, trees, it's a, it's a mini LA it's a shithole now i don't like tulum anymore but <laughs> yeah but you get it's what i'm going to mix it with and it's the metaverse, so we can literally we can make it like a melting point where we're just mixing all these different aspects that would work. So it doesn't have and to we're, just. And we're, when we're it. talking about making things feel like a little bit more live, you know, there's going to be galleries. You know, Nye's artwork exactly. is going to be all over the place. Interactive galleries. You know, we may do featured different artists here and there. Um, we're going to have an athletic club. We may have different types of games um, on different floors. Um, so each floor may be may look quite a bit different too but um there'll be interactive opportunities for whether it's just artwork or um actually getting your avatar involved awesome man mark i'd like to ask uh, nye what um his overall opinions are on the nf nft space for artists i know a lot of artists are moving into this direction so there's a lot of money involved maybe but do you think it's hurting art? Do you think it's helping art? What is your thoughts on NFT? I think it's both, but I don't think it's it's um, necessarily affecting art in a negative way. I like the fact that it's giving artists a, a chance to kind of make money without these big corporations, because for a while, a lot of the money that artists make is really tied to them working with somebody. So I like the fact that some kid in America or in Lagos can just wake up and mint some works and make good money out of it. But I think it's also putting pressure on artists who, the older artists to kind of try and readjust their philosophy to try and just, um, how do I put it? Like it's forcing artists to be like, oh, am I doing the right thing by not being in the NFT space? Because I've had a lot of older artists ask me, oh, what's this NFT about, what's going on? There's a lot of FOMO going on. I think another thing I'm not really too sure about is how a lot of artists have started to pander to the markets there they're no longer trying to create work that they like. They're trying to create work that looks like Beatpool or all these other artists just so they can make money, which I don't think is the right way to go, but I'm, I'm not the one to judge. But I think overall, it's, it has most, more positives than negatives because it's kind of like a new way of making money as an artist. You know, in the past, you either had to be working with the big Fortune 500s or just doing something else. But now you, you don't even really need to know anybody. You can just get your marketing right, promote your NFTs and you're making money. I've seen so many people online say NFTs help them pay their parents' mortgage. It has helped them raise their family. It has helped them. Um, I know somebody in Nigeria personally. His name is Owo. He's the one behind AfroDroids. And a lot of the money that he made from AfroDroids, he donated it to some orphanages. And he's been sharing progress reports. Now they're building houses for these orphanages. You know, they're providing resources. So I think there's a lot of good in the NFT space. It just depends on how the artist is using it. But I think it's more good than bad. Obviously, there's also the environmental angle, which I think needs to be figured out. But I also think it's all kind of unfair to pin all that on the NFT space. Because you think about it, the major culprits for what's going on with global warming, they're not more than eight companies. A lot of these big corporations are actually responsible for what's... So a lot of these companies are, they actually, the reason why we're having a lot of these global warming issues like i think 10 companies in total and i think it's unfair to just pin the only effects of global warming on the nft space but yeah i i feel like it's it's a good initiative and it's helping artists create their own platforms and new sources of income so yeah yeah as long as we get away from like the uh i think the cartoon artwork you know that, that's, yeah. that's 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 almost dead now Think, yeah, uh, a lot of people are trying to like body apes. I've seen so many variations of apes. Well, amazing. That's part four. I'm very excited for you, Tommy. You got your art director. Your chemistry seems good together. Nah, you yeah, seem like you've been you, ahead of the you. curve. I like your energy, and I'm excited to see what you guys uh, get into. It's going to be interesting. We got some final words, you guys? Hi, right, thanks for having us. Yeah, this has been a, yeah, been a fun series. Us, yeah. Glad to keep it going. Um, the, the team's coming together surely but slowly. Naive is the first step. And um, I'm, I'm extremely glad to have him a part of the team and, and move forward from here.
Nai, are you going to be in uh, Lagos the rest of uh, this year, 2022? Well, no, I, I travel every now and then. I'm supposed to get to Senegal in February. And I think I want to go to... I'm not sure, but I travel... I travel. I try and travel like three times a year because I don't like staying in just one place. It limits my frame it's of view. So I like to, yeah. Last, I think in 2019, I did a lot of traveling. I traveled like four times. Went to Cape Verde, Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda. So I just like get to Miami space. and New York City, and that creativity <laughs> is gonna explode, baby. Definitely, definitely. It's well, just the whole visa situation. America, America is not really. A fan of Nigeria, so right, applying right, for right. visa is. But we'll see. We'll get Actually, there. I have we'll no problem there. coming to America. It's just the old visa, but I'm sure we can work that out. So. Yeah. yeah. Why, why I ask is I'll be back in Europe um, come February, and then I'm deciding what I'm going to do in the summer. I might go mess around in Africa because I've never been, and if I do, you should. You, you should. You should. You should. Because I, I can sense that your energy is very. You like living in the moment, and Lagos is. You definitely live in the moment. Like it's, it's wild, but it's also like the energy is different. Yeah, it's, it's got soul, baby. Art, soul. It has. It has. It has. It has a lot of soul. You definitely enjoy it. I right, Tommy. And the music find, is. Tommy and I. Where can we find all the, the socials and stuff? Um, we're gonna drop uh, lots of artwork for Nye on Metaverse Hospitalities Twitter. Um, and I, are you most, you're more on Instagram, right? Yes. Instagram. We have a, this whole, um, ban on Twitter. So you have to use a VPN in Nigeria. Ah, uh, gotcha. The government gotcha. Is, but yeah, what's your, what's your Instagram handle? Hello. Hello, Neil. I'll send it to you. I'll send it. You have my Instagram. I'll send it to you. For, but for the viewers, so they can check you out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So hello, Neil. Okay. Well, so it's hello. N I Y I O K E O W O. I can put it in the chat so that you can just perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll attach that to uh to Twitter and everything, and and send people uh you know shots of your work and whatnot. Get them excited. Yeah. Well, watch this. Watch this. Actually, one second. This this is my uh creative artistic work right here. Ready? Hey, there he is. Ooh, right here. nice. Right <laughs> Wait, Hi, guys. That? Oh, <laughs> but this is Instagram. This this handle is for Instagram. I've sent the one for Twitter. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah. We'll throw it out yeah. there. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Make sure you live bold and excited to continue this series. Ciao. Hey, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it.